in San Antonio. And a matchup, a battle between the Pac-12 and the Big 12. It's the Oregon Ducks and the Longhorns of Texas. Welcome to San Antonio, everybody, and happy holidays. Brad Nessler along with Todd Blackledge. Oregon comes in as the number three team in the nation in scoring. Todd, they started off brilliantly. Yep. Eight and O oh on the season. They got as high as number two in the BCS. Then they hit a little rocky road in November, and we find out now there might be a reason for yep. that. Well, everybody knew that Marcus Mariota, their quarterback, got banged up in the, down the stretch, but the severity was pretty much unknown. He had a partial tear in his left MCL in the UCLA game. He never complained, he never made an excuse, and he never missed a snap down the stretch. But clearly, the Oregon offense was missing a dynamic part of it without him as a running threat. Now, he is maybe not 100%, but he's healthier now than he's been in a long time, and I expect him to play extremely well for this Oregon offense tonight. They are coming off a win, dramatic fashion in the Civil War and beating their arch rivals from Oregon State in the final 29 seconds. So they come into this 10-2 and two on the season, seven and two in Pac-12 play and the Ducks of Oregon about set to take the field here at the Alamo Dome. They will take flight right now. following but still this place is full of burnt orange and there's a reason for that because for Texas fans they're going to remember the Alamo whether it's win or lose tonight because it's Mac Brown's final time on the sideline after 16 seasons and 158 yeah. wins if he gets to 159 what do his Longhorns have to do tonight to pull an upset you know Oregon likes to use the slogan win the day for Texas it's win the line of scrimmage they must win the game up front defensively their front which is one of the strengths of their team has to be disruptive in the run game and put a lot of pressure on the quarterback when they try to throw the football. And on offense, they must run the football. And if you want a benchmark, 200 yards is the number. Under Matt Brown, when the Longhorns run for 200 or more, they're 81 and 2. They started off the season 1 and 2. Then they put it together, and they, in fact, played for the Big 12 title in their loss to Baylor in their last outing. So it's one more chance to make their coach a happy man. After a great career at North Carolina, 16 years in Austin as the head man, and it all comes to a close tonight. One more pregame interview for Matt Brown, and it's with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, you've been adamant that you don't want this game tonight to be about you, that you want the focus on your team. So what is it that they do need to focus on to win against Oregon tonight? Well, Oregon's a great team. They're a BCS caliber team. They've got tremendous speed. A team that four or five weeks ago could have been playing for the national championship. we got to be us. Got to run the ball. Got to try to stop the run, get them in long yardage situations. We got to hit some key passes, and they've been really good in the kicking game. So we've got to be better than them tonight in the kicking game. You say running the football is crucial. You've had some depletion on your offensive line. You're down to two scholarship running backs. What will be the biggest challenge you have to overcome to run the ball? Well, let's hope we've got it enough, and they're really tired, and that's an issue, Holly. But right now, it's not an issue. We're going to play. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. On the other side is Mark Helfrich in his first year as a head coach of the Ducks of Oregon. And he said to us yesterday, it's been like a three-day coaching clinic being around Mac Brown. Kind of a mentorship in a hurry over the last 48 hours or so. And Nick Aliotti, another longtime great, the defensive coordinator, 22 years. He's been on the Oregon staff. This will be his final game tonight. He's decided to retire, and he's one of the classics in all of college football. Max got the headset on one more time, looking for his 245th career win. And of course, the College Football Hall of Fame will come calling when he's done. The eyes of Texas indefinitely were upon him all those years. Second only to Darrell Royal in victories in Austin. Texas won the toss. They want the football. Matt Wogan's got it teed up. That's Marcus Johnson back deep. Duke Thomas will join him there. 
52nd all-time bowl appearance for the Texas Longhorns. Only Alabama has made more. Valero Alamo Bowl underway. The kick is deep and won't be returned. So that'll bring out Case McCoy and the offense for Texas. Of course, the younger brother of Colt McCoy, and that's maybe the last really good quarterback, if not great quarterback, that Texas has had, and that's been part of the problem, actually, in Austin. Well, Case McCoy started out as the backup to David Ash. David Ash was injured in the third ball game. Case took over, went six and three as a starter, and the key for him tonight, end every possession with a kick. Extra point, field goal, or punt. Don't take unnecessary risk with the football. So from the 25 yard line in a loaded backfield, it'll be the give to Malcolm Brown and stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Rodney Hardrick made the tackle from his linebacker position as we take a look at our impact players tonight. And Malcolm Brown will have to make an impact. They've got to get a running game going. Jackson Shipley with Mike Davis a little bit gimpy has got to be the key man as a receiver. Tony Washington leading sacker for the Ducks and on the back end, Ekpre Olomu is an all Pac-12 defensive back. Now they got something going with a running game, first down, and a lot more. Late flag, though. Jackson, Back at the 30-yard line. Yeah, Jackson Shipley, I thought, did a nice job of not blocking in the back, but a late flag. Holding offense number eight. Not a good enough job, I guess. Nope. And it's all coming back. They got outside. Watch Shipley. Well, there it was right away. When I saw it, he was getting out of the way, but he grabbed initially and a good call by the official. He hooked Avery Patterson for safety, so it all comes back now to the 17-yard line. And this is what Texas cannot afford to do, and that's get off schedule. Yep. They have to stay ahead of the chains, run the football, and then throw off a of play action when they want to, not when the defense dictates. That's a spot foul, so it makes it second down at 18. Play action. McCoy is going to go long down the left sideline. Just overshot Marcus Johnson, who had maybe a half step on Ekpre Olomu. So they took a shot at the home run, and it was close. Yep. Pretty good throw. Good position for the ball by McCoy. Outside. Either your guy gets it or nobody does. So now third down and a mile. Texas was 41 percent on their third down conversions this year but you don't convert a lot of third and 18s. Ducks thinking about a blitz and they bring it McCoy down the middle and it's intercepted and it's Patterson coming the other way Avery Patterson and he's in touchdown Oregon. As Todd said, don't get behind schedule, third and 18's behind schedule, and it's a 37-yard interception return for a touchdown. And now the Ducks show the formation shifted to the left, and now everybody will come in. And Matt Wogan will attempt the point after. The last thing you want to do against a high scoring offensive team is give them a defensive yeah. touchdown. And that's just what Texas did a gift. A little over a minute into the ball game. Case McCoy, late throw over the middle, high, deflected. Patterson, the senior, safety takes it 37 yards, 7 0 Ducks. I'm a cheap bungee cord. This guy bought me at the gas station. I'm perfect for holding down the lid on a box of sweaters. With 800 pounds of tailgating gear. Nah. And if you have cut rate insurance, the biggest hit of the day could be to your wallet. So get an Allstate agent. 
I'd be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Mayhem is everywhere. Are you in good hands? For more than 60 years, Wrangler's been making jeans more comfortable. They feel good, wear strong. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans are built with a U-shaped construction. They don't cut into you like jeans with a V pattern. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. We were gonna offer neon, but we thought the loudest part of your headphones shouldn't be the color. We could have slapped on a celebrity endorsement, but we decided to march to a different beat. Let's face it, you don't need to be a doctor to know that trends fade, but true sound never does. Introducing JBL Synchros with live stage technology. Hear the truth. Upon official mortgage review, Quicken Loans can save them over $200 per month. It's good. Challenge us to save you money with the official mortgage review from Quicken Loans. New Year's Eve. Johnny Manziel leads number 21 Texas A&M against the 24th ranked Duke Blue Devils in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week. Duke takes on Texas A&M New Year's Eve at 8 on ESPN. College football lives here. On behalf of Valero, welcome to the 21st annual Valero Alamo Bowl. I'm here with University of Oregon head coach Mark Helfrich and the University of Texas head coach Mac Brown, whose teams have earned the right to play in one of college football's premier bowl games. As title sponsor, Valero is proud to be a part of America's bowl tradition that supports hardworking student athletes and scholars. So, no matter who you're rooting for, go Ducks! Hook 'em! We hope you enjoyed tonight's game and we wish you a happy new year. 7-0 Oregon, the third pick six thrown by a Texas quarterback this year, Todd. Well, Jackson Shipley is the go-to guy on third down, so they have Ekpre Olomu on him. Now, Shipley is going to actually get separation and is open, but the ball is thrown high, and that enables Avery Patterson, the safety over the top, to get the deflection. It would have been a catch, potentially a first down. The errant throw results not only in the turnover, but the first score of the game for Oregon. The 12th interception thrown by McCoy this year and the third pickoff of the year for Avery Patterson who took it the distance. So Wogan kicks off again and again this one won't be returned and they'll bring it out to the 25 yard line. Texas started the season as I mentioned earlier one and two and that was not a good thing for Mac Brown and the Longhorns. Losses to BYU and Ole Miss. Then they got it together. Put together a string of wins, including a win in the Red River rivalry over Oklahoma. And then got all the way to the Big 12 title game. And would have won the Big 12 with a win, but they lost that regular season, uh, that last game, to Baylor 30-10. to And then a couple of weeks ago, Mack Brown resigned or announced his resignation, coaching his final game tonight. So Texas will start again. Remember, they had a good run on their second carry of the ball game before the holding call and this is Malcolm Brown who gets out for five or six on that carry as we check in with Holly. Well after the interception Case McCoy came to the sideline and he was just sick. He's told us his one job tonight was to take care of the football. So Mike Davis his wide receiver kept pounding him on the shoulder pads. You got this man. You got this man. They talked about what they can change on that route. He's trying to get back into the game. He says that being resilient is one of the qualities that has really helped them this season. We'll see if they're resilient after that mistake. There's his career number including the 19th interception a couple of minutes ago. Second down and four. McCoy in the gun. Malcolm Brown to his right and whistles and flags stop this play. And it's going to be a false start on Texas. False start. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Our officials are from the ACC. Our referee, Dennis Hennigan. So two penalties on running play so far, and that's not good. And that's the most experienced offensive lineman for Texas, Mason Walters, the right guard, making his 51st consecutive start tonight. And again, Texas cannot afford those kind of mistakes. They have to do all the little things right to have a chance against Oregon. They'll keep it on the ground, and this one only back to the line of scrimmage. Kaylee Keepy on the inside defensive tackle. Get on the stop. That brings up third down and long again. He 
again, that five-yard penalty seems kind of innocent, yeah. but instead of having a third and three or four, they have third and nine. So the first two third down plays of the game for Texas, both long yardage type situations. And as you see, kind of middle of the pack on their third down conversions this year. Third down and nine. McCoy in trouble, threw off his back foot, got it complete, but it's short of a first down. Got it to Kendall Sanders, and he's going to come up a couple yards shy. It'll be fourth, and Texas will have to kick. Got some pressure that time from DeForest Buckner, and throwing off his back foot did complete it. But that'll bring out the punting unit. Anthony Farah, who does both the punting and place kicking chores for the Longhorn set to kick. Braylon Addison waits on the other end, and he's got a couple return for touchdowns this year. <laughs> Switch to put a couple heavy guys back there to protect. Nice kick. Addison, fair catch over near the sideline and runs out of bounds around the 24. 11.38 remaining in the first quarter. Marcus Mariota and the offense for the Ducks on the field for the first time when we come back. American ingenuity. That's what made us great. That's what keeps us great. As early as the automobile, we've been a nation of movers and continue to be a nation of shakers. And as our nation's largest refiner, we're here to keep that momentum going supplying you with the quality fuel you need and the convenience to make life a little less hectic. You're only satisfied with a job well done, and so are we. We're Valero, and we're helping keep America moving. As a business owner, I'm constantly putting out fires. So I deserve a small business credit card with amazing rewards. With the Spark Cash Card with Capital One, I get 2% cash back on every purchase every day. I break my back around here. Finally, someone's recognizing me with unlimited rewards. Meeting start at 11, Cindy. Get the Spark Business Card from Capital One. Choose 2% cash back or double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? I need your time, Chief Larry. A man. A man and his truck. And some company. And five hard landings. And eight sore vertebrae and one bruised tailbone. And three hours to make it all blissfully melt away. The all-new Chevy Silverado. There's no quieter full-size pickup. Strong for all the roads ahead. Jumpstart your day with McDonald's dollar menu and breakfast. Home of the irresistible sausage burrito. And freshly brewed premium roast coffee you love plus other amazing tastes for just a dollar each. Every day, as always, there's a lot to love for a little on McDonald's Dollar Menu. The 2013 Valero Alamo Bowl is brought to you by Valero, keeping America moving. The Quicksilver card from Capital One Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. And the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Good pep rally earlier this week. The Longhorns and the Ducks both in attendance with all their fans. Been a fun few days here. Good turnout by the Oregon people. Most of them are in our hotel. <laughs> yeah. A lot of green. A lot of green. Right now they're in front 7-0. This is their first offensive snap. Their score came on an interception return for a touchdown if you're just joining us. So Marcus Mariota and the offense first down from the 24 straight up the middle goes to the 30 and Byron Marshall pick up of six and a hurry up. They don't uh, huddle much. So there's the numbers on Marcus this year. And a quick snap looking for his first throw. He might not get it off. 
And again, shows his running ability right there. And that's something that was taken away from him with that knee injury we talked about. Yeah, the severity of his injury, again, which most people didn't know, really took his ability to extend plays and also as a design quarterback runner in this offense. And really that left knee also hampers your ability as a right-handed quarterback to transfer weight and drive the football downfield. And here he is running again. And a first down. Pick up of 12 more for Marcus Mariota. See, when he was rolling and healthy, this zone read aspect of their offense, whether it's either the give or the quarterback keep, was very effective. They're going 100 miles an hour right now, running to his left and running for his life, and he got away from Texas again, and he might have another first down as he's knocked out of bounds right at the first down marker by Carrington Bynum. I think this is why both Mark Helfrich and Scott Frost were smiling so big when they came into our meetings last night because they know that they have their quarterback healthy again. And even though he may not be 100%, he doesn't need surgery, and he looks awfully good playing without a brace on the knee and so far in the first possession looks really good. That was Scott Frost you saw there in the press box, the offensive coordinator, former quarterback star in his own right at Nebraska in his playing days straight up the middle and they're just getting chunk yardage right now Byron Marshall might have another first down really close anyway Peter Jenkins made the tackle and this is vintage duck offense right here no huddles and getting a snap off about every 14 seconds and if you don't change the line of scrimmage against their run game you have no chance of stopping them running the football they're one of the best in the country at getting four or five yards down the field before contact if you don't disrupt things at the front play action pass this time Mariota down the middle on the run and another first down at the 12 for Josh Huff Josh Huff one of our impact players we haven't had a chance to tell you that because they won't slow down enough for us to tell you well, and he's a Texas native out of Houston very very important game in his mind and for him had some injury problems his first couple years has had an outstanding season this year as a senior at the 12-yard line. This time, Texas might have them bottled up, and they do. It's going to be a loss of a yard for Marshall. Adrian Phillips ran him out of bounds, and that's Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator, who took over as defensive coordinator after the BYU game. Manny Diaz was released at that point after they gave up a million yards on the yeah. ground to the Cougars. Well, and, and more than half of those yards were to the quarterback. And that's one area that they've really had trouble this year, especially early in the season, stopping a mobile athletic quarterback running the football. First time, Oregon's been behind the chains a little bit. Second down and 12. And Mariota's going to change things up here for the first time. Gonna and he's going to take a timeout. Yep. So, Oregon on the march. Down in the red zone. Threatening with their offense for the first time after scoring defensively. 10-10 remaining in the first quarter. We talked about Oregon. They got off to a great start as well. Started off, won their first eight games, scored 40 points or more in all of those. Got up to number two. Then a loss at fifth-ranked Stanford and against Arizona. Second straight season they've lost to Stanford, by the way. And then came back, and in the final half minute, it was Josh Huff with a touchdown catch with 29 seconds to go. And they beat Oregon State in the Civil War 36-35. So they come in 10-2. And, yeah. and what the coaches told us, that they were more, most surprised with the Arizona game. They yeah. felt like they played hard in the Stanford game, just got outplayed, got too far behind, made a valiant comeback. They, you know, cut it to 26 to 20 before time ran out. But in the Arizona game, the coaches didn't feel like their team, for whatever reason, played hard and was ready to play. And that was really disappointing. They came back and had to really fight their way for the win against Oregon State in their big rivalry game. But again, the health of Marcus Mariota is a big part of, of what they do well offensively. Over 4,000 yards by himself in total offense. Thomas Tyner in the lineup in the backfield for the first time. Eighth play of the Oregon drive. I think the mobility of a quarterback in the red zone is especially effective. He's going to keep it after faking it to Tyner. And Mariota to the corner. Didn't get the first down and a flag flies in at the five. And let's see if this one's coming back. 
Marcus lost his helmet too, but he was out of bounds when that happened. Holding offense number 32. Bayless, the tight end, is the guilty party, and it's all coming back. Bayless is on the end of the line of scrimmage right here, number 32. He's going to be the lead blocker getting out there. He's in position. Ties him up, but see the hands are on the outside, and that's what the official saw and why the flag came out. If those hands are inside on the shoulder pads, he's not going to get that call, but they were outside the shoulders, and that drew the flag. The gate's an 11-yard gain. And it would have been a yard shy of a first down as it is. And with the spot foul penalty. And I talked about Marcus Mariota losing his hat, but I thought it was out of bounds. I guess it doesn't matter. He's coming out. Jeff Lockie's coming in. So Lockie, who hasn't played much at all, in to take at least one snap. For the Oregon offense. <laughs> and they've got an empty backfield for him on second and long. And three wide receivers to the top and two to the left. Second down, 13. Lockie, it's a run all the way. There was movement up front. Again, new quarterback, new voice, new cadence, and a jump up front by Oregon. So we're seeing them go backwards a little bit here after being virtually All unstoppable. Well, Marcus coming back in. Lockie goes out. It's like giving five yards to get your regular quarterback yeah, back right. in there. Now, second down at 18. This is when. Wait a minute. Now they're telling him he can't come back in for this play. It's got to be one play, not a penalty play. Tom McCreesh from the ACC is with us up here in the booth. Tom, what's the call on that one? Well, Brad, when you have a helmet come off and the player is still in the field, he must go off for one play. If there is a foul, he has to stay out for that one play. So it's an official play and a penalty doesn't count. That's right? correct. Thanks, Tom. Great having Tom up here with us. Straightens things like that out. So it's Lockie at least one more snap. Second down and 18, and he dropped the ball, and he has to cover it. Tyner ran into him. And now, Mariota can come back in officially, but he finds himself on a third down yeah. and a whole bunch. Well, and this is exactly what Texas would have hoped for. Obviously, not knowing M Mariota was going to leave the field, but the negative plays, stopping some of the momentum and putting them into a pass situation where those defensive ends, Reed and Jeffcoat, can get after the quarterback. And yeah, they're quite a pair, both all Big 12 performers. Jeffcoat number 44 standing up. And here goes Mariota running anyway. He's going to be run out before he can get to the first down marker. But still, they got a whole lot of that back, 18 yards. And that'll set up their field goal unit for what should be a chip shot. Again, the ability of a quarterback to be a dual threat guy in the red zone makes an offense very difficult to defend. You want to rush the passer, you want to play man to man and run with receivers. If you leave a crease, a good quarterback like that's going to find it. Unfortunately for Oregon, just too much yardage needed for that conversion. Ducks don't kick a lot of field goals, whether it be Maldonado or this guy, Wogan. Matt is four out of five, as you saw on the season. 25-yard attempts, and it's up and good. So Oregon had a good drive going there before their quarterback lost his helmet. A couple of penalties backed him up. He did get a big chunk of it back, though, and set him up for the field goal, 10-0, Oregon in front. The 100th Rose Bowl game, New Year's Day on ESPN. A man, a man and his truck, and his son who would rather play computer games than go camping. And a valley, and a river, and the stars, and a new convert. The all-new Chevy Silverado, from one generation to the next, strong for all the roads ahead. Fighting constipation by eating healthier, drinking plenty of water, but still not getting relief? Try Delcalax laxative tablets. Delcalax is comfort-coated for gentle overnight relief. 
Stokalax, predictable overnight relief you can count on. When I heard Applebee's had a big juicy steak on its under 550 calories menu, I was like, what the what? Then when I ordered it and actually tasted it, I was like, what? So yeah, I really liked Applebee's under 550 calorie Roma pepper steak. Just another reason. Did you know your Xfinity service comes with features that are free, great, and easy? Like self-service. It's all the tools you need to manage your account and services whenever you want. Just go to Comcast.com, click my account, and sign in. You can view your statements and pay bills. Even manage service appointments and check the status of your service on your phone. Plus, with easy-to-use search, you can find answers to your questions. Self-service. Another great feature included with your service. Visit us at Comcast.com learn. I want to go on a vacation where I don't have to worry about a thing and I'm free to try new things. I want to be free to be with the one I love. Once you're in our world, everything is free. Now that's freedom. That's Sandals. Call 1-800-SANDALS and save up to 65%. Product shown later through app. It'd be important that I go to Texas and, and uh, start building. They come in to Lincoln and snap a 47 game home winning streak. Ricky Williams, touchdown! The record is his. Texas wins an amazing Rose Bowl. Texas has defeated Southern California to win the national championship. One last time, the Texas Longhorns time for me to move on and let someone else come in and, and restart the program. Some of the highlights and of course low lights. The resignation a couple of weeks ago and everybody here to send Mac off they would hope with a win. But right now his team is down 10 nothing. The 10th winning is coach all time. This kick might be returnable. Duke Thomas. And he just got to the 20, and that's all. National championship at the end of the 2005 season. Bebo honoring Mac tonight. He's been a Bebo on his snout. He's got Mac in leather. 158 wins, second only to Darrell Royal, as I mentioned earlier. The BCS championship, they played in another one. And had Colt McCoy not gotten hurt, yeah. maybe would have won that one. But had a great chance to win. Alabama ultimately won that game. And really, since that point, in the last four years, they've been 30 and 20, and the biggest reason, lack of consistency from the quarterback position. Nice run by Malcolm Brown, weaving through traffic for seven yards. I think this possession may be the most critical possession for Texas in this ballgame, because they can't afford to fall too far behind Oregon, because Oregon doesn't take their foot off the gas pedal. They're going to continue to score and, and move the football. Texas needs to slow things down a little bit here and again establish the running game with their big offensive line. And this time on the sweep, Brown breaks free into the secondary. Another good run by Malcolm Brown and no flags this time. So they had the same amount of yards penalty wise as they did offense, but they get 12 more right here. Nice job, Malcolm Brown following his tight end, Jeff Swain, number 82. And now Texas goes tempo without a huddle. Straight up the middle, but Brown will be stood up after a yard gain, and that's it. Of course, Texas lost Jonathan Gray, who was a sensational yeah. tailback, as he injured his Achilles in the West Virginia game. So, Holly mentioned this earlier. They're down to two tailbacks. That's about it. Right. Well, they're without Gray. Of course, they, there was a pretty good guy. one. Yeah, he was a pretty good one. <laughs> Ricky Williams. And they also have two that are suspended. Dajay Johnson and Jalen Overstreet, both suspended for academic reasons, are not here as well. Here's Brown again. A good, tough run. And he's still standing up about two yards shy of the first down. And the ball comes out at the end. But that one was whistled dead. And I think because of that lack of depth at the tailback position, we won't see as much tempo out of Texas as maybe they would have liked to, to run. They're going to have to huddle and save those guys a little bit. You're going to have Joe Bergeron and Malcolm Brown, the only two guys carrying the football. Now, Malcolm Brown, when Jonathan Gray was healthy, he was averaging 20 carries a game, and they were kind of going back and forth. But since Gray got hurt, 
His carries have bumped up to 26 carries a game. And so he has really upped his workload, but he's been up for the challenge as well. I'm assuming he's going to get it here again on third and two. And he gets it again. And he's into Oregon territory down to the 45 yard line. First down, Texas. Nice job blocking by Swain and Mason Walters. Watch number 72. The left right guard pull around, get a block on the linebacker. The tight end kicks out. And that's just good power football for Texas. Again, the strength and the advantage they have is they're a bigger, more physical group at the line of scrimmage. And they've got big blocking tight ends as well. So in Oregon territory at the 43. And now Bergeron's going to give Brown a breather. And he goes down right at the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard. Is that Prey Olumu in on the stop? This is a guy that has the opportunity probably to come out and go to the NFL if he chooses. Has not made up his mind yet. Said he'll talk things over with his parents who right now are in Nigeria. Right. And uh, got to wait till they get back before he thinks NFL. Five straight runs by the Longhorns. And now play action. McCoy going to go deep. Got a man out there. And again, just overshot. This time, Mike Davis. So he's gone long twice, and he's had a little too much on it. When Oregon chooses to blitz and play man-to-man, -man, Texas is going to take some shots down the field, and that's what happened. Oregon brought pressure. One guy comes free, and McCoy just a little bit outside with this throw. Davis had his man beat to the inside with the ball a little bit too far over his outside shoulder. I mentioned Davis. He's only practiced a couple days here yeah. in the last month. He has a hip issue. He did practice the last couple days, looked okay running on that route. Third time, Texas has been third and nine or longer. And again, third and 11 here. Shipley in the slot and Olomu on him. They're going to play it safe on the ground. And getting to the 40 yard line is Bergeron. And that's about six yards shy of a first down. And this might be Neverland here. They might go for this on yeah. fourth down and, and six. Looks, looks like they are. Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator. Mac Brown told us, you know, we're not going to just, we're going to play to win. We're going to do what we always do. We're not going to just take a lot of unnecessary risk. But I think this is where you have to go for it. Again, this possession, I think, critical for Texas in this ballgame. It's actually seven yards to go on fourth down. Three receivers to McCoy's left, and he's going that way on the crossing route, and he's got it. And it is Jackson Shipley and Matt Brown says move the sticks at the last minute they moved Shipley out into the middle of two other receivers and then brought him on a quick slant. It was a late adjustment of the formation and again on third or fourth down that's where Case McCoy is looking to go with the football Jackson Shipley the majority of his receptions result in a first down a big one there to move it to the 32 yard line of Oregon. McCoy on first down to throw over the middle and completes it. Breaking a tackle is Bergeron, and he's got another first down. And now Texas is going to go tempo a little bit. They come up to the line in a hurry. Nice job by Bergeron, the outlet receiver, getting right up the field and getting extra yardage. Now back to Bergeron. Broke one tackle, a stiff arm, didn't get away. Whoa, he did get away. Somehow kept his balance. And let's see it's, if he's okay. That was an awkward landing. Now Bergeron hurt his foot after three carries in the Baylor game and sat out the rest of the game. Great job maintaining wow. his balance on that one. 12th play of the drive. And in the red zone at the 17 yard line. Malcolm Brown back in. Texas on a pistol set and he goes straight up the middle. And he's going to drive his way down for four more. And this is a good looking yeah. Texas drive. And Obviously the conversion on fourth down huge, but they have stayed ahead of the chains for the most part on this drive right now They're in the red zone. They're third and two a running play a typical power run is very much in play right now on this third down Their first two possessions they had penalties on both. They yeah. haven't had one this drive 13th play of the drive De La Torre the fullback in an eye now with Brown the tailback Brown first down 
And it's first and goal at the nine. See, third down and two, you bring an extra tight end in, and you say, we're going to run power football. We don't think this Oregon defense can line up and play smash mouth football. If they get us behind the chains, and they can rush the passer and play to their strength, which is their secondary, they have the advantage. If we can stay ahead of the chains, you're saying this if you're Texas, then we have the advantage with our front and with our tight ends. Davis and Shipley, the wide receivers, but it's been this guy, Malcolm Brown, that's got him down to the nine-yard line. He'll tote it again on first and goal. And Brown running over Ducks down to the two-yard line. Again, two tight ends. Jeff Swain, number 82, on the end of the line. Donald Hawkins, the left tackle, with a nice block at the point of attack. And now second down and goal at the two. A six-minute drive by the Longhorns. Brown driving to the goal line. He's close. Inside the one. The other thing this drive is doing, not only is it getting Texas in scoring territory, it's allowing that Texas defense to rest and Greg Robinson and his defensive assistants to kind of gather the troops and get better prepared for the next time they face Marcus Mariota. And it's keeping the Oregon offense right. on the sideline. Third down and goal. The 16th play of the Longhorn drive. And you can see it's the length of the football from the goal line. Malcolm Brown has done most of the damage to get him to this point. And it's straight ahead for McCoy. Touchdown, Texas. And you know he feels good about throwing, about scoring after throwing an interception earlier. One yard touchdown by Case McCoy. Went right behind his center, Dominic Espinosa. I'm sure Oregon was expecting another run by Malcolm Brown. And Texas got the quarterback sneak in for the touchdown. Anthony Ferry in for the point after. Up and good. A seven minute, 12 second drive by the Texas Longhorns. Just what the Longhorn doctor ordered. 124 remaining first quarter. Mac Brown's Longhorns back in it. 10-7. Wake up. The future is upon us. Who will define it? Who will defend it? Who will explore it? Who will celebrate it? Who will change the world and change themselves in the process? You will. This is the University of Oregon. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. So Ledge Oregon got 10 points in about 3 minutes and 17 seconds. Yeah. Texas got 7 points in 7 minutes and 12 seconds. And the most critical possession for Texas in this ballgame. Power running, time consuming. The first two Texas offensive drives, they had 7 plays, only 15 yards, had a turnover, a couple penalties. That time, no penalties, 16 plays, 79 yards, and pay it off with the touchdown. So Nick Rose will kick off. That's the Anthony Thomas. And don't give him yeah. a chance because he'll take advantage of it. One of the most dangerous running back return men combos in college football. And he's got a chance from two yards deep. Great speed. But he slowed down and knocked down before he could get to the 25 yard line. Well, Capital One Bowl Week continues later on tonight. Taylor Kelly and the Sun Devils square off against the Red Raiders in the National University Holiday Bowl. All part of Capital One Bowl Week. Number 14, Arizona State against Texas Tech tonight. 10-15 on ESPN. Second meeting between those two teams. We just got done seeing Arizona State yeah. a few weeks ago in the Pac-12 title game. And it was a great start for Texas Tech, and then it fizzled a little bit. We'll see if they put it back together tonight when we're done here. We have 118 remaining in the first quarter. Good game. Oregon with an interception return for a touchdown. 
and a 25 yard field goal. As I said, their time of possession, virtually nothing compared to what Texas did on that last drive. And this is Mariota, who's going to go out of bounds after a pickup of about three, and we check in with Holly. Bad news for Texas, their big physical safety, Adrian Phillips, who has 75 tackles on the season, has been taken to the locker room. They're evaluating his left hip. So in the game now, you guys see number five, Josh Turner. He is experienced. He's played in 10 games, has 34 tackles, but they'll miss the physicality. They sure will. And the leadership, Phillips is one of their captains. Jenkins makes a nice stop on Marshall. You know, it's funny because Jenkins had Mariota behind the line of scrimmage on first down and couldn't finish the tackle. That time on second down, he wrapped up and got the ball carrier to the ground. So back-to-back -back plays, nice job by Peter Jenkins. Tyner comes back into the Oregon backfield. Third down and five, and you can hear the crowd in burnt orange coming to life here at the Alamo Dome. Texas moving Jeff Coat around in a stand-up position. Blitz coming. Easy throw and catch to Tyner, the freshman. And he's run out of bounds on the Texas sideline with a first down. So on third and five, he got ten. A little talking going on by both sides right now. Nice read by Mariota, seeing the back escape. Kind of a hot route anticipating a blitz. There was no blitz, but the back was wide open anyway, and a good decision. Mariota on first down. He's going to run with it again. Boy, he's got great wheels. And I don't mean just for a quarterback, for anybody. And now limping off is going to be Duke Thomas, who was in on the tackle. And there goes another guy down in the Texas secondary. He's their corner when they go to their nickel defense. <laughs> They're and not even sure who to get on the field. Texas may have to call a timeout. The the well, quarter. they got lucky. The yep. quarter came to a close. And Dwayne Aquina and Mac Brown trying to figure it out over there. End of one. Valero Alamo Bowl. It was a 10-0 Oregon lead, but the Longhorns fight their way back. And it's 10-7 at the end of one. Ah, the sounds of the river walk. The gentle lapping of the water. The playful chirps of the birds. The soothing whir of the margarita blender. Just blending away. From world famous landmarks to the best margaritas around, see everything this city has to offer at visitsanantonio.com. Before you're ready to date. What do you mean? I saw in your emails that you'd gone through a breakup. I can't believe I'm having this conversation with my computer. You're not. You're having this conversation with me. <laughs> what was it like being married? There's something that feels so good about sharing your life with somebody. Falling in love is a crazy thing to do. It's like a form of socially acceptable insanity. <laughs> I've never loved anyone. I love you. Her. Rated R. Now playing in select theaters everywhere January 10th. Wow, this jumbo popcorn chicken's so great, huh? Yeah. I got the spicy ones for my tennis elbow. It's a shame you got tennis elbow. My doctor said I should spice it. Yeah, probably ice it is what he said, seeing as how icing is an actual remedy and spicing is not. He said ice it? I'm gonna live! Yeah! Well, you just have tennis elbow. Pete, I'm gonna live! <laughs> Two good cures for common hunger. Original and spicy jumbo popcorn chicken, starting at just $1.99. This is how you sonic. You're saying I can get AT&T's network with a data plan and unlimited talk and text for as low as $45 a month? $45 a month. Wow. No annual contract? No annual contract. No long-term agreement? No long-term agreement. Really? Really. OK, so what's the catch? There is no catch. OK, I'm obviously getting nowhere with you. I'm going to need to speak with the supervisor. I am the supervisor. Oh, finally, someone I can talk to. It's not complicated. New smartphone plans starting at $45 a month with no annual contract, only from AT&T. TD Ameritrade, helping you reach your long-term goals one small step at a time. A man, 
a man in his truck, and some company, and five hard landings, and eight sore vertebrae, and one bruised tailbone and three hours to make it all blissfully melt away. The all-new Chevy Silverado. There's no quieter full-size pickup. Strong for all the roads ahead. Welcome back to the Valero Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. Set to start the second quarter. Brad Nessler, Ty Blackley, Tyler Rowe, and our ESPN crew. Hope you had a good holiday and a good new year upcoming. Good first quarter. Yeah. Oregon jumped out to a 10 0 lead. Texas with a long scoring drive answered. And now it's Oregon back in Longhorn territory with a first down at the 41 yard line. We talked about the health of Mariota. Seven carries, 76 yards. This time they go to their tailback, Tyner. And he picks up about three. And Adrian Phillips came back into the secondary for Texas. So right now it's Michael Thompson, Josh Turner, Adrian Phillips. Quandre Diggs, Duke Thomas, Holly told us during the breaks, getting that left ankle retakes and hopefully can come back into the secondary for the Longhorns. The reason that him being a runner, Mariota, is so important to this offense is that makes the defense account for him and add extra people at the line of scrimmage setting up play action pass. There's the play action right down the middle of the tight end and Bayless. Got it down to the 11 yard line and lost a wheel but a pickup of 27. See here's Bayless. Look at all these guys right around the line of scrimmage. You got to account for the quarterback run little play fake. He slips behind the linebackers and that's an easy throw for Marcus Mariota. And I think more than anything that play is set up by the fact that Mariota has run for almost 100 yards here early in the ball game. That's a career long catch 27 yards for Bayless down to the 11 yard line. It's not first and goal. It's just outside the 10. First and 10 at the 11. And that's an empty backfield. Mariota is going to throw and low and incomplete intended for Braylon Addison. Nice job by Adrian Phillips that time just holding the edge. He came on a blitz and he didn't get faked out by Mariota. And he forced Mariota to throw instead of escaping out of the pocket. Second down at the 11. Mariota again, play action. In trouble from behind. He doesn't know it, and the ball is out. And it's going to go out of bounds before anybody can get it. Jackson Jeffcoat finally got some heat. Now the Oregon quarterback and we got a duck down as well and that's Tyler Johnstone the left tackle. The ruling on the field is that the ball was not recovered in bounds. It is Oregon's ball. What Texas is doing with Jackson Jeffcoat is similar to what they did in the Texas Tech game. Instead of lining them up on the end of the line every play they're moving them around in different spots. This time he works on the guard instead of the tackle and easily beats. Stevens to get to the quarterback. He was the defensive player of the year in the Big 12. 12 sacks coming into the game. What well, the Ted Hendricks Award is best defensive yep. end in the country, and that's the second fumble he's caused this year. And it could have been a beautiful gift, but they just couldn't find a handle before the ball got out of bounds. Tell you who made a nice play there. Jake Fisher, the right tackle, number 75. Because said Reed, the other defensive end, is is zeroing in on this football and Jake Reed pushed him out of bounds before he could recover it and that enabled Oregon to maintain possession. The bad news is the left tackle Tyler Johnstone is the guy that's down for Oregon. Sophomore out of Chandler Arizona and he was clutching his right knee and they've already taken the brace yeah. off that knee or at least loosened it. And we're going to check on Tyler when we come back 13 31 remaining first half. Honestly, my kids are hard to impress. So I got the Windows Nokia tablet. It's, well, impressive. It's got the brightest HD screen, super fast 4G LTE, so my son can play games and movies almost anywhere. And it's got Office for school stuff. But the best part, I got the Lumia 928 for my daughter for free with the best low light smartphone camera this side of the North Pole. Dad for the win. Mm -hmm. 
could tell you that carrying out dominoes will make a Tuesday feel like a Friday. But that would be a lie. Pizza alone won't make your weeknight special. It's what you do with it that will. So carry out a large three-topping pizza for $7.99 only Monday through Thursday. Upon official mortgage review, Quicken Loans can save them over $200 per month. Challenge us to save you money with the official mortgage review from Quicken Loans. Elite quarterbacks Braxton Miller and Taj Boyd duel in a matchup of high-powered offenses. The Discover Orange Bowl, Clemson, Ohio State. Coverage begins Friday at 8 on ESPN. Were you wary driving an expired license, sir? I had a birthday two years ago. That's the one. Are you the TV movie, right? Who played you? My car. It was good. You won the Golden Globe. Oh, they don't just give those away, do they? I think I'm cursed. I had a baby. Will you please just go and see a dentist? No. Now climb on, get busy. One. One. Two. Oh! The construction trailers are gone. The saws and the hammers have stopped. Thank goodness. And you're invited to a remodel celebration going on right now. Hi, I'm Jim Silvera. Proud to be in the family store since 1954. It was looking like 1954, but not anymore. Come see our new look. Every vehicle has been white tagged with sale prices clearly marked on the windshield. Truck buyers, J.D. Power has just awarded GMC Truck Stores the best in service customer satisfaction for all brands in the USA. So come out and see our new look in Hillsburg. Again, Tyler Johnstone helped off the field by his teammates. They're working on his right knee. And with that, Everett Benyard, the third, is going to come in to play tackle. There's the big guy, number 71, 6'7, 308 pounds, senior out of San Diego. That's a big loss for Oregon because Scott Frost told us Tyler Johnstone had been their most consistent offensive lineman all season. Playing that left tackle has blocked against some of the best pass rushers in the Pac 12. And he was After matched up with Jeff Coat. The ball was fumbled from the 17 yard line forward. It went out of bounds forward to the spot of the fumble. By rule, the ball is returned to the spot of the fumble, the 17 yard line. So that's going to back it up about three more yards, and it's going to bring up third down and about 16, I think, upcoming. And this would be a huge play for the Texas defense if they could force just a field goal here. Trailing by three with 13:31 remaining in the half. If you rush the quarterback, if this is a pass, you have to rush with a little bit of discipline and a little bit of control because Marcus Mariota has been very effective running the football out of this formation on third down. He's got Byron Marshall with him in the backfield. Third down at 16. Play action. Mariota going to flare it out there to Marshall. He's got Longhorns in front, and he's not going to get anywhere near the first down. Only got about three yards. Adrian Phillips got over there to help out on the stop. And a good job by Greg Robinson's defense to hold serve there yeah. and force a field goal. Timely negative plays by the Texas defense. You know, they, they haven't had three and outs, but they've had some timely negative plays, particularly in the red zone. Matt Wogan hit earlier from 25 yards. He's five out of six on the season. This will be a 32-yard attempt by the true freshman out of Indian Trail, North Carolina. And this one just inside the right upright. So two field goals by the freshman. And he gives Oregon now a six-point lead. But it could have been worse. Jackson Jeffco, his defensive play on Marcus Mariota right there, forcing the fumble, created a third and long that became fourth and long. Americans, we develop the things that keep our country on the move. And at Valero, we make the fuels that make them all go. Just stop by and you'll find high quality fuel for your cars and trucks, plus great tasting snacks and drinks for you. Everything you need to get you where you want to be, coast to coast. We're Valero, our nation's largest refiner, and we're helping keep America moving. Your mama's got nothing on me. Your daddy's got nothing on me. Why would you ever need to eat nachos? 
on the go. Let's say her parents came home early. That's one reason. The new grilled stuffed nacho for 129 at Taco Bell. Everything you love about nachos grilled up in an all new way. Take the nachos and run. BNY Mellon combines investment management and investment servicing, giving us unique insights, which help us attract the industry's brightest minds, who create powerful strategies for a country's investments, which are used to build new schools, to build more bright minds. Invested in the world. BNY Mellon. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more on car insurance. Everybody knows that, Parker. Well, did you know auctioneers make bad grocery store clerks? It'll be twenty-three fifty. Now seventy-five, twenty-three seventy-five. Hold them, hey, to get down twenty-three seventy-five. Twenty-four, hey, twenty-four dollar, twenty-four and a quarter, quarter. Now half, twenty-four and a half and seventy-five and twenty-five. Now a quarter, hey, twenty-six and a quarter. Hold them, hey, to get down twenty. You want to do it? Five and a quarter. Sold to the man in the khaki jacket. Geico. Fifteen minutes could save you. Well, you know. The 2013 Valero Alamo Bowl is brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live mas. BNY Mellon, invested in the world. And Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Riverwalk isn't any prettier than during the holiday season unless the Spurs are winning the NBA title. Then it's lit up just about like that. 13 to 7. Oregon in front after a 32 yard field goal capped a 60 yard drive and 10 plays and the guy that hit the field goal Matt Wogan set to kick off to Marcus Johnson and Kendall Sanders. And this will be returnable from the goal line by Kendall Sanders and Sanders has got a little bit of room and he's out to the 35 maybe the 36 yard line. We go from Kendall Sanders to John Saunders John. And that's all about you. This instant replay brought to you by the new surface, Ole Miss against Georgia Tech. Corey Dennis gives it up, and Sedarius Bryant with the tackle. Oh, Ray Vino falls on the ball. It is a safety, and as Georgia Tech was marching for what could have been a go-ahead touchdown, they fall down 25-17, and that's what they lose by, Brad and Todd. All right, John, thanks. Texas now going to work from the 36-yard line, and it's Malcolm Brown who picked up about two as we check in with Holly. Oregon left tackle Tyler Johnstone was evaluated on the sideline for that right knee. Now they don't give out injury updates, but from what I observed, they told him what the diagnosis seems to be for now. He put his hands over his face, his shoulder started shaking. He looks to be very upset. The players came over and consoled him, including Josh Hoff and Marcus Mariota. He's getting fitted for crutches, guys. Does not appear uh, that he can return. Boy, that's terrible. Texas here again stuffed. On the run, Taylor Hart made first contact on Malcolm Brown, and it's a loss of a yard. That's going to bring up a third down and long, something Texas didn't get into on their scoring drive. Back-to-back -back nice plays by the front of the Oregon defense. They got pushed around a little bit the last couple possessions. That time, they withstood the challenge on the first two downs for one-yard gain. And now they put Texas in a situation they want, playing to the strength, which is their rush in the back end of their defense. Four wide receivers for Case McCoy. McCoy down the middle. It should have been caught by Shipley, but he couldn't hold it. Brian Jackson put a hit on him, and the ball came out. Talked about this secondary of Oregon. They have played a lot of ball together. A couple of these guys have been playing since their freshman year. They have great communication. They work well together. Brian Jackson, a safety out of Hoover, Alabama, with a perfectly timed hit as the ball got to Shipley. So that'll force a punt by Anthony Farah. This one's going to take a Texas bounce. Wasn't the greatest punt in the world, but it made it all the way to the 11-yard line. So it ends up being a good one. 10-58 remaining first half. Oregon leads by six. That's what you are doing, okay? Too good, too good, too good, too good, too good. Keep battling, keep battling, keep battling. 
Life insurance from New York Life can help your family keep good going. McDonald's dollar menu and more is all about getting more. It's all your favorites and a whole lot more, like a 20-piece chicken McNuggets, just five bucks. More choices than ever before. That's the dollar menu and more. This is the Quicksilver Cashback card from Capital One. It's not the limit the cash I earn every month card. It's not the I only earn decent rewards at the gas station card. It's the no games, no signing up, everyday rewarding, kung fu fighting, silver lightning in a bottle, bringing home the bacon cashback card. This is the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, everywhere, every single day. So ask yourself. OMG, Jack, have you ever checked out these new product ideas people post on your page? They're kind of amazed. Ping. Yeah, that's where I got the idea for my new fajita ranch melt. Seasoned chicken with a gooey blend of pepper jack cheese, roasted peppers, and onions on toasted sourdough for just $3.99. Is that also where you got the idea for that clock bracelet you always wear? My watch? No. These were invented a long time ago. Like in the 80s? My ideal man is someone with a lot of confidence. Lovable and creative. Someone who's smart, articulate, because I look for something that can compliment me. And when I'm looking for love, I'm looking for a best friend. Someone who's positive, adventurous, confident. With blackpeoplemeet.com, it gives you everything that you need to find what you're looking for. It's all right there. You just got to open your eyes and look for it. This, this is where blackpeoplemeet.com it's totally free. Back at the Valero Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. 13 to 7. Oregon out in front. Brad Nessler, Ty Blackley, Kali Rowe along with you. Partner, I got to give Greg Robinson's defense some credit. Yeah. Uh, one of the highest powered offenses in the country has been down in the red zone twice and came away with only two field goals. They got some negative plays when it mattered the most. I, I would expect Oregon in this possession. They got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of DeAnthony Thomas. He's only touched it once on a kickoff return. Josh Huff also. Those are a couple of their big playmakers that have been a little bit quiet here the last few possessions. They do start in a little bit of a hole here at the six yard line. And DeAnthony Thomas, who Todd just mentioned, is in the backfield with Marcus Mariota from the 11. He gets the call. There's a flag down, and he's going down. Courtesy of Jackson Jetco for no game. Again, Dennis Hennigan, our referee. Ball start, 71 offense. That's Everett Bernard the third, the guy that's in for Tyler Johnstone, yeah. and he gets the false start penalty. And Jackson Jeffcoat that time, instead of being in a stand-up position, was lined up with his hand on the ground right over the new guy. And I would expect Greg Robinson to keep Jeffcoat there and to see what this backup offensive tackle has. So first down at 15, back of the six, and this is Mariota on a run all the way, and they're going to drop him at the line of scrimmage. Carrington Bynum with a tackle. Well, you just can't overstate or overemphasize the impact Greg Robinson has had on this defense. After three ball games and a one and two start, their numbers were dismal. And they have steadily gotten better, particularly in stopping the run as this season has gone on. Yeah, it went from about six and a half yards to carry to about three and a half. This is a run all the way again. But Mariota, the secondary. And his helmet comes off again, come but he's again. got a first down. So that's the second time he's lost his lid, and he'll have to come out. Well, he's six foot four, 215 pounds with great speed. And you can see how hard he is to tackle. There are longhorns around him, but unable to get him on the ground. Better strap that thing on a little bit tighter. That's his fifth run ledge of 10 yards or more already in the first half. Now his best game rushing 122 yards against Virginia. That was only on four carries. Lockie will give it off to DeAnthony Thomas. He only got a couple before the Longhorns can stop him. Desmond Jackson was the first guy there. And here comes Marcus back out. Helmet on. The most carries he had in a game was 13 against Washington. He may break both of those marks before this game's over tonight. Yep. The good part is we told you he was healthy and he's showing that with his running ability tonight. The scary part is the coaches said they may, don't think he's 100%. Right. I was just thinking that. Looks pretty good at 95. 
Second down and eight. Here's the Anthony Thomas spinning his way close to a first down. It'll be about a yard shy. We got a late flag. Going to have a personal foul after the play is over, I think. Just straightening it out and make sure who the guilty party is. Cameron Hunt is a freshman. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 77. 15-yard penalty, third down. Mark Helfrich coaching him up on the sideline, but here you're going to look after the play was over. And you just can't do that. Especially with a guy in striped shirts right next to you. <laughs> Now they have two backups in on that offensive line. Manor Greg has come in now, a senior. And it's third down at 17. And Jeff Coat again in the stand up position. Here's Jeff Coat, the defensive end, their best pass rusher, trying to give him a different look. Mariota's going to float it out too far in front of Josh Huff. And Texas defense holds and is going to force a punt. The negative plays, whether it be by a defensive play, or a penalty against Oregon has been the saving grace for this Texas defense. They have capitalized on the negative plays and forced another punt. Alejandro Maldonado will punt this one away. Jackson Shipley is back deep. Texas should get outstanding field position. And kind of a tallywagger here that Shipley fields cleanly on a fair catch around the 48 yard line. Only a 34 yard punt though. So Case McCoy, who's made one mistake tonight but also scored a touchdown, left great field position for the Texas offense when we come back. One look at the big Texas sky can leave a person speechless. That's why we also have roller coasters to balance things out just a bit. From soothing sights to thrills of all kinds, see everything this city has to offer at visitsanantonio.com. Mine was earned orbiting the moon in 1971. Afghanistan in 2009. On the USS Saratoga in 1982. Once it's earned, USAA auto insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve current and former military members and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Win the greatest weekend ever. You, Dale Jr., three friends, pit passes for two Darlington races, Junior's Lake House. Who's there? Casey Kane, barbecue ribs, extra sauce, napkins please, bass fishing, bonfires, pool toys, break time. <laughs> crazy stuff. <laughs> maybe some real crazy stuff. Okay, maybe not. Text BBQ to 47328 for your chance to win the greatest weekend ever. Plus a Chevy Silverado. Great lifts. It's gonna be great. When I tasted the big juicy steak that's on Applebee's under 550 calories menu, I was all, what the what? Then I tasted the zesty Roma chicken and shrimp, which is also on the under 550 calories menu. And I was like, I can't believe it. Then I told some friends about it and they couldn't believe how great it tasted either. They were totally, who the, how the, what the, huh? New under 550 calorie Roma pepper steak and zesty Roma chicken and shrimp. Two almost unbelievably tasty reasons to see you tomorrow. Need another reason? Now for a limited time, an under 550 calorie dish is on the two for 20 menu. 13 to 7. Oregon out in front. Most of the 70 yards rushing tonight is courtesy of that guy for the Longhorns, Todd. Well, he's a 225-pound back, and they're just using their strength. Combination of runs. This is a power run. Kick out by the tight end. They pull the guard around. Big opening outside for Malcolm Brown. They've run inside zone, and they've also run outside zone. This is a two tight end formation. It's just the outside zone stretch play. And watch these Texas tight ends and linemen just stick on their blocks. And Malcolm Brown doing a good job running behind this physical offensive line. He's getting a breather right now. Joe Bergeron is in there. It makes you wonder if they're going to take a shot with Case McCoy after the good field position on the short punt at the 48-yard line. 
The throw is tipped, but caught by the tight end, George uh, Jeff Swaim, I should say, pick up of a couple. I hear what you're saying about taking the shot, but again, you got to stay ahead of the chains. And so if you throw on first down, you better make sure you complete it. Now, they only gained two yards, but that's better than second and ten. They just shaded on the 50 on the Oregon side with a second down and eights. The guy Texas needs to get involved if he's healthy enough is Mike Davis. He's out there. He's a big play receiver, number one. They got to get his hands on the football. Bergeron runs into Hart first and still powered for about three yards. Taylor Hart is just one of those big physical guys. Six foot six, 287 pounds. Coming into the game, 64 tackles from his defensive tackle position. That's a lot of tackles for an inside interior defensive lineman. Second team, all Pac-12 performer. Third down and six. The tight end shifts to the right side. And McCoy is going to go that way to him, but he dropped the ball. Now that's a good read, a good decision, and a good throw by Case McCoy. And Swain, who's done a beautiful job blocking, just started to look upfield, I think, before he secured the catch. That's two drop passes by the Longhorns on third down. Good decision here to punt the football. Your defense is playing well. You're creating some negative plays. Try to pin them back deep again with this punt. You saw Swain say to Case McCoy, my fault over there on the sideline. Now fair to punt. Fair catch taken just inside the 15 yard line. Let's take a look at our matchup Capital One Bowl on January 1st, Wisconsin and South Carolina. First meeting between these two from the Big Ten and the SEC. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be. Wisconsin, very physical, can really run the football. They'll challenge that South Carolina defense. Gordon and White just picking up in the footsteps of yeah. all those other great tailbacks for the Badgers. I'll tell you the fun guy to watch in that game, though, too, is the quarterback for South Carolina, Connor Shaw, Shaw, one of the most underrated <laughs> players in all of college football. There's so many great quarterbacks in the SEC this year, and he always seemed to get overlooked, but he was always one of our favorites. First down at the 15. And Byron Marshall only got about a half yard. Malcolm Brown, the other Malcolm Brown. They got one on offense, yep. one on defense. He's played well this year, too. It's a big physical. They got a couple 300 pounders there on the inside. Oh, this team, when they played Baylor in that last game, they held Baylor under 60 yards rushing in the first half. They really controlled the line of scrimmage. Second down and nine. Blitz off the corner. And Mariota's going to run the other way, and he's going to get another first down. So again, that's his sixth run of 10 yeah. yards or more. And a beautiful read because Texas was blitzing from the opposite side. And I think Mariota saw that, pulled the ball and kept it, and ran away from the blitz for a big game. He's been the biggest part of their offense tonight as a runner. Otherwise, Texas has held the high-powered Ducks, who averaged 47 points a game, pretty much in check. Remember, the touchdown they got was on an interception return for a score. Mariota going to loft it for DeAnthony Thomas on the sideline and just a little bit off his fingertips. Well, they had what they wanted. DeAnthony Thomas coming out of the backfield, working on the linebacker, Santos. That's a mismatch. And the ball just a little bit overthrown by Mariota. Tell you what, Santos hung in there pretty good. He did. Took a good angle to the receiver. And again, you see Thomas in there with Mariota. That's a dangerous duo. A second down and 10 from the 26. Here's a long one down the middle, complete, and it's Josh Huff. Pickup of 24 on a first down Oregon. Well, Josh Huff, again, has been a little bit quiet. Nice job running right down the seam. Zone defense for Texas. And Mariota does a nice job picking him out in between defenders. First down right at the 50. Back to the ground game and a whistle before the play. Ball start. Offense number one, five yard penalty, first down. Getting back to Josh Huff for a minute. He had a career game 
in the Civil War, including the touchdown to win it with 29 seconds left. He caught nine balls for 186 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah. There's his numbers on the season. Also, he's a Texas native, right. and he's made it very clear that the Longhorns didn't offer him a scholarship. That's why he wants to really shine tonight yeah. against the Burnt Orange. A little dispute in what actually was said or not said <laughs> yeah. in that recruiting process. And again, the Longhorns have got it all bottled up. Marshall goes down, and that's Shiro Davis with a big play. Again, the timely negative plays. So far in this game, that's the fourth negative rushing play and the fifth penalty on Oregon's offense. And, and when they have stayed on course, Texas has had a difficult time stopping them, but the negative plays have been huge so far in the first half. Second down and 19. They've got to get all the way to the Texas 40 for a first down. Mariota, wide receiver screen. That was bottled, but caught a second time, and now planted is Braylon Addison. Boy. I think the ball well, it didn't come out. It came Boy. out for a second, and he <laughs> caught it what, again. You want a defense to run to the football. The way you tackle fast players in space, you don't depend on one guy. You get guys running to the football. Watch all these orange shirts running to the football and securing the tackle. He might have caught it three times, Todd. He did hold on, though, but it's third down at 18. Three wide outs to the top of the screen. And it's going to be the Anthony Thomas. They play it sort of safe here. And the Longhorns swarm under him and around him at the 47-yard line. And there's a sight defensive coordinator. <laughs> I think part of the decision to run the ball there by Oregon was... Hey, we've got a backup left tackle in. Jackson Jeffcoat is giving him some problems. Let's not put him in a difficult situation on third down and long. Let's punt the ball, play a little field position, and see if our defense can make a play. Greg Robinson has been around a long time as an assistant and a head coach. I don't know that I've ever seen him that yeah. excited. Maldonado, you look behind him as he yeah, punts. No return, man. Oh, I don't understand that. It Going to be caught inside the 10 by Dior Mathis. So a 44-yard kick and nobody back to shag that one down for the Longhorns. Capital One Bowie continues Tuesday with a triple header on ESPN. 12:30 Arizona takes on Boston College at the Advocare V100 Bowl at 4 o'clock. Rice and Mississippi State get together at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Duke. And Texas A&M get together in the Chick-fil-A Bowl in Atlanta. Capital One Bowl week continues tomorrow. All the games on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Could be the final time you get a chance to see Johnny Manziel play for Texas A&M. So Texas in a hole here. But again, their defense held. And they're right in the ball game, trailing by six. With just under four minutes remaining in the half. I think Texas wanted a timeout. We'll take it with them. 350 left second quarter. For over a hundred years, our alumni have been earning awards like the Nobel Prize, the Pulitzer, Olympic medals, and the Heisman Trophy. But there's no sense limiting yourself just yet. The University of Texas. What starts here changes the world. Back in October, Texas was a two touchdown underdog to their rival Oklahoma. They came away with a 36 to 20 win and the formula was very similar to the plan they had coming into this game. It starts with running the football. They possessed the football by converting third downs. Case McCoy was efficient throwing it. He had the one interception, but he made some big throws. And defensively, they controlled the line of scrimmage. They got after the quarterback. Right now, they're kind of on that script. Even though they're behind in this ball game. they're playing it the way they need to. From their eight-yard line. It'll be Malcolm Brown, and Brown's got a crease. Malcolm Brown into the secondary. Brown across the 40, all the way out to the 48-yard line. Boy, beautiful job by the right side. The right tackle, Trey Hopkins, the right guard, Mason Walters, both get around and seal their blocks. One missed tackle, Jeff Swain, who's having a beautiful first half blocking from his tight end position. 
Big strong run on first down. Malcolm Brown, a career long 40 yard gallop, and he's over 100 yards here in the first half. First down at the 48. Again, Sway, the tight end, switches to the right side. McCoy pump fakes one way, comes back, and his tight end dropped another. Well, he's having a great blocking game. Yeah. I can't say much for his pass catching so far. And in both cases, he took his eye off the football. He's looking to go upfield before securing the catch. Watch his head turn before he secures the catch. He starts to turn to find the defender. First things first, catch the football. Case McCoy has six incompletions, but three of those have been dropped, so his receivers aren't exactly doing him any favors. And this one is whipped out, complete. The Kendall Sanders only got about three out of the deal, but they are in Oregon territory. And it brings up a more manageable third down situation. Mike Davis, their leading receiver with a hip injury. Kendall Sanders has a stress fracture that he's battling through. Neither one of those guys have practiced very much during this bowl preparation. Both healthy enough to go tonight, and they are definitely big play guys when they get their hands on the football. You saw Raheem Castle, the middle linebacker, come out shaking up for Oregon. Third down and seven. McCoy rolling to throw. In trouble, fires late and incomplete. He intended for Bergeron on the sideline. That's going to bring up fourth down. See a little field position game. You know, yeah. Oregon's not used to playing this kind of a game. But the last month of the season, their offensive numbers went down for various reasons. We talked about the health of Marcus Mariota. Now he looks great tonight. They're down an offensive lineman as we take a look at their left tackle, Tyler Johnstone, heading to the locker room. They did switch the field, though, with that long run by Brown. And so Farrah now can kick it to the far side. And force a fair catch back around the 11 by Braylon Addison with 2.08 remaining in the first half. Let's head to the studio and check in with John Saunders. John. Brad, thanks a lot. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, I'll be joined by Mark May and Lou Holtz. Plenty of highlights, including Ole Miss. Interesting game against Georgia Tech. Navy was able to run the ball against Middle Tennessee State. That one is coming up. Plus, we'll look ahead to Arizona State against Texas Tech. That's coming up tonight when we're done with your game. That's coming up at halftime. Right now, Brad, back to you. All right, John, we'll see you in about two minutes and eight seconds. You know, last year we had this Oregon team in the Fiesta Bowl against Kansas State, and Kansas State was kind of playing right with them in the first half, and in the last two minutes they gave up a long touchdown drive that Marcus Mariota kind of came alive on, and it really put the game a little bit out of reach. Texas, as well as they played, needs to get a stop on this possession. Mariota's been the big play guy. Here he goes again. Mariota down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds in front of the Texas bench, but he's got another huge gain out to the 45-yard line. They have had trouble stopping running quarterbacks all season, and I think this one might be the best, at least the fastest, that they've faced all year. 132 yards in the first half on 12 carries. 10 yards plus a pop for number eight. Here he is, play action. Down the middle, wide open to Anthony Thomas. And Thomas down to the 36 yard line and just like that again they've played texas's defense has played solid they've got negative plays but in two plays oregon has completely flipped the field and is in scare scoring territory again play action hit from behind but throwing that one's incomplete hit the dirt josh off the intended receiver and we've got a longhorn player down that's jeff coat oh boy jeff coat was in pursuit one of the Oregon players was trying to help him up, and he said, uh-uh, hold on a second. He is up on his own. Boy, he's a relentless pass rusher. He's had a great season. You know, he missed the final seven games of the year last year with a torn pectoral muscle. Came back strong from that injury and really has been on fire here the last seven or eight games. You know, a lot of times we talk about time of possession. You don't think that's a big deal. And with Oregon, it isn't. They are second to last in the country right. in time of possession because they score like this every couple right. minutes. They only have two drives of close to five minutes. They both came in the UCLA game. They're on the move right here with 139 left in the half. And coming wide is Thomas Tyner. 
And Collard almost, but he got extra yardage, and he's close to another first down. Now Scott Frost told us the last two or three games, this guy, Thomas Tyner, has become a real guy for them. He's a more physical runner, 200 pounds. You know, Third down and a yard. They go in a hurry. And it's Tyner who's got the first as he spins his way inside the 25. You know, that was their sixth third down situation. Prior to that third and one, they had third and five, third and 13, third and 17 twice, and third and 24. It's a whole lot easier to call plays at third and one. Scott Frost is calling him. Here's a slip screen complete to Addison. Addison, who did he get planted at about the 17 yard line by Leroy Scott? Oregon's in fine shape. They got two timeouts. Looks like they're going to use one of them right here. Oregon, that is their second timeout of the half. They got one it's remaining and 53 timeout. seconds until halftime. Marcus Mariota has been the star, and it's been with his legs. Nothing wrong with that knee tonight, I don't think. No, he has looked outstanding. Good decisions, running north and south, protecting the football when he runs. Some of it has been by design. Some of it has been improvisation. But he has been very difficult for the Texas defense. This time he read the blitz coming from the backside. Instead of giving it to the back for a loss of yardage play, kept it, ran the other way for a 10-yard gain. And he has been the most effective weapon running the football for Oregon, no doubt. Let's check out with Holly. So Marcus Mariota has had to wear a big, thick, black structural brace on that left knee with that partial MCL tear. But tonight, he's just wearing a small sleeve. It's under the tights of his uniform. It's not very big and bulky, so he's got some more freedom of movement as we're seeing from his running. But guys, it's no small miracle. Torn MCL, even a slight one, is very difficult to return from, and he's doing a great job tonight. Yeah, he's a whole different cat, or in this case, duck, when he's healthy. I'll tell you the other thing is, when he was hurt, and playing he never missed a snap and never made an excuse that's pretty impressive by this kid as well by the way Jackson Jeffcoats back out there for the Longhorns Mariota shovel pass inside first down more heading to the end zone touchdown Josh Huff Well, Peter Jenkins, number 19, reads the play and is in position. He gets off the block, and he's right there, unblocked. Can't make the tackle on Huff. And Huff, as all good ducks do, goes airborne. Huff is a physical receiver. He's over 200 pounds, has a very strong lower body, and he ran right through that tackle of Peter Jenkins. What a huge scoring drive. In seven plays, 88 yards, and a touchdown, and that's 20 to 7. So similar to what we saw in the Fiesta Bowl last year. A score right before half, and Oregon gets the ball to start the third quarter when we come back after halftime. There's the numbers for Josh Huff, the Texas native. One of our impact players, and he just made an impact there. Capital One Bowl Week continues later on tonight. The Sun Devils and the Red Raiders square off in the National University Holiday Bowl. All part of Capital One Bowl Week, number 14, Arizona State, Texas Tech. And their bowl histories. Fourth time in the Holiday Bowl for Arizona State, second time for Texas Tech. And always a great scene in San Diego. Done a lot of those, a lot of fun, and yeah. usually really high-powered, high-scoring games. This one, the score just changed completely on an 88-yard drive in a minute and 24 seconds. And now Texas doesn't have a lot of time to work unless they get a good kick return. And they're not going to get a kick return. Over the shoulder catch by Marcus Johnson. He'll take a knee, so they'll come out to the 25. They do have two timeouts remaining. And now they trail by 13. Another look at the touchdown. Well, it started with a couple of runs by Marcus Mariota and then a beautifully executed shovel pass extend the defense get Jeff Coat out of the way and then a one broken tackle Josh Huff again a powerful wide receiver Scott Frost told us he plays with a little chip on his shoulder that chip may be a little bigger tonight <laughs> being a Texas native that's our Buick drive recap and it was a heck of a drive in a hurry and now Malcolm Brown who's been most of the offense for Texas tonight takes it off the right side and that's going to bring it down to 35 seconds. 
and the rushing tonight. And now the throwing of Marcus Mariota, 130 yards, and a touchdown on that last shovel pass that covered 16 yards. You know, it's interesting. This guy, through the first eight games, was as good as anybody in college football, a front runner for the Heisman Trophy. He gets hurt. They lose a couple games in November, and not only does he kind of fall out of the top leaders for the Heisman, he's not even in the top 10. And uh, his coaches, I think, took that personally. Yep. And, you know, Marcus is such a humble guy, maybe one of the most humble guys I've ever met. He's never going to say anything, but uh, deep down, I'm sure there's a little bit of a something that he wanted to prove in the ball game tonight. Of course, he made the decision to come back next year and have a big year as well. He had a big first half, both with his arm and his legs, and he's given his team a 20 to 7 lead at halftime. As the Ducks looking for their 11th win of the season, they're halfway there. And the Longhorns defense played exceptionally well until that last drive that covered a long part of the field in a minute 24 seconds. Let's check in with Holland. Well, Coach, you said you wanted to run the football, and you have. What's enabled you to be so effective doing that in the first half? Well, Holly, we're good at running the ball, and, and that's something we've got to continue to do. Very disappointing with a 13-7 to 7 deficit there. We had the ball to 50 twice. We had three and outs. We dropped some passes. We've got to play better. Our guys are playing hard. Oregon's really good. They're as good as publicized coming in. Quarterback's as good as anybody in the country. If he's healthy, he'd be in that Heisman mix. But uh, we've got to play better on offense and make more plays. Perfect. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. As Mac has done for 29 years, telling it like it is at halftime. And his team trails by a score of 20 to 7. As we send it back to John, Lou, and Mayday back in the studio. Brad, thanks. They gave him a gift touchdown with the interception. Right. Then their defense played well. They had field position. They didn't capitalize with points. They had drop passes. And now the most important possession in the football game for Texas is their defense right now. Because if Oregon scores again here on this possession, I don't think they can catch up. The Ducks will get the football as Nick Rose kicks high and short. And I mean short down to the 23-yard line. And it goes to Keenan Lowe, and Lowe is out at about the 33-yard line as we check in with Holly. Well, Marcus Mariota has 132 yards rushing in the first half. I asked Oregon coach Mark Helfrich, do you need to get other guys involved? Nobody else has more than 15. He said, no, we're taking what the defense is giving us. He said, if they try to stop Marcus, we'll just go to somebody else. He said, having Marcus healthy and mobile makes us a whole lot better. Boy, has it ever in that first half. He was sensational. It really makes him a completely different team because when he is healthy and can run and that's a viable threat you have to account for him with an extra defender and a half and it just makes him that much more difficult it sets up their play action pass it makes them that much more dangerous on the ground Byron Marshall who's been held pretty much in check tonight picks up about four Adrian Phillips in on the stop when you think about the balance of what Mariota has done tonight. As Holly said, 132 on the ground, 130 in the air. And he's going to the air and a slant down the middle. And a first down at the Texas 43. Josh Huff again. 20 more yards for the Ducks. It's just a, a simple look route. I mean, he's not running any timing route. He's just running into an open area. And the play action freezes the linebacker. And now Mariota on the run. This time he'll slide down as he got to the 36 yard line. Bindham was there to make sure. He didn't go any further, but they've already moved it to the Texas 36. Opening 50 seconds of the quarter. Mariota down the middle and complete again inside the 25. That one's to Braylon Addison, so they're mixing it up here in the opening minute of the third quarter. Well, we talked about Josh Huff being a Texas native. So is Addison out of Missouri City, Texas. Both these wide receivers with a lot of incentive in this ballgame. Mariota floats one and incomplete intended for Bayless, who he hit for 27 yards earlier in the ballgame. Leroy Scott was back there covering. Marcus did something a little funny at the end of that throw like he was stretching something in his leg or adjusting something and he's walking kind of with some stiffness in that left knee right now. Yep. Might be one something to keep an eye on. Oh, there's something wrong with him. He does not look right. Kind of walked stiff legged up to his center. And now the shotgun. 
about a yard gain on the play. And now it's going to be interesting to see if he runs again. Yeah. If he doesn't have to. And you're right. And Holly said he's wearing a sleeve under those tights. And you saw him adjusting his thigh pad a little bit. He's playing with that left knee. It's not what it was in the first half. It doesn't look like. Third down and nine, and that might change the game dramatically. He'll throw on third down, and it's incomplete and almost intercepted by Bindham. Josh Huff, the intended receiver. Actually, it was Keenan Lowe, the intended receiver, again, but incomplete. Again, with a left knee injury, not only does it affect your ability to run, it affects your ability to transfer your weight from your back foot to your front foot and drive through the football. And that was the first throw that Marcus has made that was not on the mark, really. The longest field goal that Wogan's hit this year is 38 yards. This is a 39-yard attempt. He's two for two tonight. And he's perfect. Doing a good job. True freshman's got nine points in the ball game on field goals. Stretches the lead 23 to 7, Oregon. Ah, the sounds of the river walk. The gentle lapping of the water. The playful chirps of the birds. The soothing whir of the margarita blender. Just blending away. From world famous landmarks to the best margaritas around, see everything this city has to offer at visitsanantonio.com. I, descender of the demon horde. I, my father's son. I, Frankenstein. I am out there. Fighting to defend you. This ends tonight. I, Frankenstein. Rated PG-13. Experience it in IMAX 3D. When I tasted the big juicy steak that's on Applebee's under 550 calories menu, I was all, what the what? Then I tasted the zesty Roma chicken and shrimp, which is also on the under 550 calories menu. And I was like, I can't believe it. Then I told some friends about it, and they couldn't believe how great it tasted either. They were totally, who the, how the, what the, huh? New under 550 calorie Roma pepper steak and zesty Roma chicken and shrimp. Two almost unbelievably tasty reasons to see you tomorrow. Need another reason? Now for a limited time, an under 550 calorie dish is on the two for 20 menu. Whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want in one place. NCAA.com cuts through the clutter so you're in control. School pages connect you with your favorite team so you can access highlights and features you won't find anywhere else. And NCAA.com is championship central with unparalleled access across all divisions. Whether at home or on the go, NCAA.com is the home of college sports. Well, I went out to midcourt, knew the odds were against me. I didn't hit the shot once in practice. But I took my two-step dance and let it fly. That's one of the things you grow up dreaming about as a kid. I was on sports then. Celebrating its ninth year, sponsoring good hands, field goal nets, all state makes contributions to participating universities, general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, all states contributed more than $3.4 million in scholarship funds. There was a scene during the timeout, Marcus Mariota over.